My brother and I grew up on Long Island with a, in a household that was just full of machines and parts and pieces. And my father was an engineer, and I worked for him during the summers um, at the place where he was a, a metallurgist and an inventor and a, an engineer. So it sort of came naturally to me, or just seemed to me that's the way most people were, that they would think about things in terms of of engineering. Uh, I taught at Middlesex School in Concord for 30 years and during the last 10 years of my being there we uh, rebuilt British sports cars every year and we usually started with things that were well beyond they were wrecks, total wrecks, mostly uh, MG's and Austin Healy's and Sprites and things like that. So. The engineering part of it I learned because that was my passion, how, what makes things run. This particular piece is, is called White Wings. All of these uh, pieces are activated by a small uh, motion sensor or light sensor and they'll run for about 25 seconds. And uh, <laughs> I actually go over to uh, a place called Lubri Comics and they sell these bogus surveillance cameras and I take them apart and get this little thing down here, which is a circuit uh, which runs this, but runs off of a little motion sensor, which is a small, it's actually a light sensor. Uh, and it turns on the circuit and it runs for 25 seconds or so. This piece evolved, uh, it's called White Wings. This is not how it started out at all. It was the frame and the wheels, because I just thought the wheels and the, and, and the shadows that it created was quite beautiful. But what was up here was a, se a se series of like paper rockets that were just kind of moving back and forth when you touched it. And that was all it did. And then I was fascinated by movement that went like this, almost like worm-like or snake-like or fish-like. And then I found out that if you turn it over, it actually, if it goes backwards, it becomes a wing movement. So I built these, which are made out of um, st Starbucks and Einstein stirring sticks, and laminated them together and then moved them. They're fixed here, and they move here, here, and here on three different sets of wires. And once I saw that uh, one wing, or half a wing, was doing what I wanted it to, I remember holding it up to a mirror so I could see both halves at the same time. And that was kind of the beginning of the end for me because I just was captivated by these, these rhythms. One of the beauties of this piece for me from where you're standing is that you can see both the wings and the reflections of the wings. And if you turn it or move it, you get both the wings in context with the shadows. And you get a lot of different things happening at the same time. Um, one of the fascinating things for me, and I, I'm going to bring you back to this piece for a moment, is there is a, this motor drives a crank, and there are three little lobes on the crank, and they're about 90 degrees apart from one another. No, not 90, uh, 30 degrees apart from one another. Um, so if one is positioned at zero, the other is at, at maybe 30 and maybe the others at 60 or, or 60 to 90 somewhere. And what happens is this set of wires goes up and down. This set of wires over here is coming off of his is at 90 degrees to that. So while this is going up and down, this is going in and out. And then from here to here, these are 180 degrees out of phase. So you get the impression that all three of these wings are moving uh, relative to one another, but not in, in synchrony with one another, but not at the same at the same rhythm, but not at the same time. So it gives you a much more complicated visual. The same thing again happens on this one, but it's just two wings doing the same thing. So 
these are going up and down, and these are going back and forth. They're only 90 degrees from one another. Um, this piece is called um, Daedalus, on the other hand. And Daedalus was the father of Icarus. And Icarus was the one who, by legend, flew too close to the sun and the wings melted and so on. He drowned. Um, this piece, I, as is often the case with pieces that I'm working on, I don't find out what they're about until they're all done. Virtually, or most of the pieces have wheels on them. And the wheels, to me, represent a passage of time or passage through time, or somehow having gotten from one place to another place, either forwards or backwards, or maybe just standing in time without moving if they're the same size. But this particular piece started out because I found a dozen, there are only eight here, but I found a dozen uh, children's school scissors and uh, carried them around. They were cheap. They were like three bucks, four. So I carried them around for a month or two, and they just sat in my studio for a long time after that. And I knew they were going to open and close, but I didn't know how. And eventually I figured out that what I wanted them to do was open and close in sequence. I was having trouble getting them to open and close in a sequence that made sense to me. So I put these fishing weights, these lead fishing weights, on them so that, in fact, they were open 270 degrees of, us, of the 360, and they were closing f through 90 degrees of that. And then it was done, I thought. And so they opened and they closed, and they opened and they closed, and that was kind of interesting, but uh, it ceased to hold my interest. Um, so I decided that something else had to happen. So what I wound up doing, and this, this took me, it took me a long time to figure it out, was I put these pieces of paper on and just let them hang down, and they're just barely escaping. So these, there are one, two, three, four um, wires that are running off of cams back here, and the fishing weights, again, return them to the either up or down position. But the whole issue was this notion, notion of just barely escaping. I, I think that no matter how many times you, you watch a movie or a play, say if you're watching Romeo and Juliet, it's going to end the same way. No matter how many times you watch it, your viewing it will not change the outcome of it. And no matter how long I watch this, this is still going to work unless it gets bent. But there is such personal involvement when people look at this. They're, they're rooting for the scissors or they're rooting for the paper and it just escapes at the last sixteenth of an inch. But this one is called Odysseus, the return from Troy. And um, these boots belong to a friend of mine. I think they're Korean War vintage. They have his name in it, Hugh Fort Miller, and his serial number. And I just thought that these, the anchoring and the grit and the involvement of these with embattlement and the purity of the wings complemented one another quite well. And it was only then after that that I came to understand from the Odyssey that um, Odysseus eventually returned to uh, his wife after years of battle, Penelope, I think it was. Um, so he maintained his, his purity of heart, I guess, and loyalty to her. And I had no idea that that was what the piece was about until it was finished. Um, and that's how it often goes for me. I, I love the texture of this and the roughness of it and the, the grace of the wing movement. But the pieces pretty much dictate their own, their own name. This piece is called Rapture, uh, W-R-A-P-T-U-R-E. I just thought that the, the, the light and the folds and the crinkling of all the fabric gathered light in a very interesting way to me. I, I, I just liked, liked it a lot. So I set out, set out on the internet to find out um, where I could find a straitjacket, and, and I did. There, there, in fact, there, there are quite a number of them out there. And some of them come studded with bolts and leather and black and so on, sequins. But I did find this one, and I built a torso out of, out of wire and, and batting, and I put these wings over it. It's the same mechanism as, as Daedalus or as white wings or worms or 
the, the um, Odysseus. But then when it was done, the notion became for me, uh, the concept of rapture, as is often spelled, most often spelt with an R, uh, about where people leave this life and they achieve perfection with the, our greater being. Um, the whole notion to me seemed to be encapsulated by people being wrapped in, in, in imprisoned by their own belief systems. These are just seahorses. These came from a craft shop. And then I painted them white. And inside of each one, which it's actually better seen with, with daylight, because there are little Swarovski crystals inside. And with the daylight, they just shimmer and, and glitter and, and move. I've been fascinated by the sounds of the spokes. And I bought a small digital tape recorder, and I put it on here. I just let it sit there. And I took a very, very fine piece of wire and ran it along the spokes. And in the quiet of the studio, these sounds started to happen. Um, and you can only hear them to some degree. Uh, so I, I tried to find how fine a piece of wire. And in fact, I took a hair. And the microphone was picking up the hair on each one of these things, which became chimes. So the sounds were very fascinating. And they're all different. This is called In the Bag, or Round Bag Lunch to Go. There's a small motion sensor right here. There are two sets, of, there's a crankshaft inside, and you can see it's sort of breaking through here. But one of the tipping points for me about this piece is most people don't even realize that anything's happening until they, until they come up to it, and they say, oh my god, you see that's going on? So, a little bit of, of, of light change, and this thing starts writhing and, and almost seething, like, what's going on in there? Who's in there? What did I forget? What did I leave? Th this piece is not kinetic, but for all the world, it might just as well be. Uh, I'm going to pick it up and hold it against the window here. It, it takes on an entirely different appearance when it's top-lighted. It, it really becomes quite elegantly defined. This piece opens up, and I'm not, I think this came from Bali, but here's this, I just call it froggy, and the, the notion that he's both at peace and ready to go sprung sort of matches the notion of these wheels being sort of sprung, and uh, I like the painting on the side with this, the stars, and I like the shadows that these pieces project. I still feel like I, I, it's, it's just beginning for me, so I'm having fun, and may it ever be thus.